Hello everybody, this is going to be a walkthrough of the cage method that I showed in my last video. That video will be linked below in the description and it will probably be right on the side in the related videos titled the cage method. Now the cage method I showed in that video isn't the normal cage method the method I'm doing is kind of a mix of the cage method and the sandwich method. I posted that video in a thread on speed solving and that thread will be linked to below. I got some feedback from it. And yes, yeah, so this is uh, my cage method. I'm going to do a walkthrough. It won't be an in-depth tutorial but I will be showing you the algorithms I use in this and how I go about it. This will be a little fast paced so I recommend highly recommend that you have good knowledge of the 3x3 and already have a sense of the 4x4 and already know how to solve it. So here we go. Okay to start my cage method what you do is you first solve the cage of one layer, so just all the pieces of a layer except the centers. Um, so I'm going to start with white. Um, here I have a white corner, and I also notice there's a white center here. You might as well start building your center, building your side on a face that already has a white in that center, because it will save you an algorithm or two later. Um, I see that there's two here, so I'm just going to turn this corner down and then start solving. I'll go ahead and start with the corners, just placing them in. There we go, and now I place the edges. So here I have this edge, move it down into place, move it out of the way, put the layer back, move it up. I can put in two at a time move this down, out of the way, put this up. If it's in the top layer, and this red goes here, move it out of the way, bring up this layer, bring it back down. When I have a piece that is in the top layer but flipped upside down, what I can do is this piece goes here. So I can bring up this layer, flip this around, and when I bring this layer back, it had flipped this piece and then I can put it in like normal here I have a green here I have two greens and I can put them in at the same time here I have a red there you go that's your first layer and now on top you want to orient the corners with your 3x3 three three knowledge or just 2x2 two two knowledge. If you know CLL, you can solve the corners in one step. And then you permute the corners, T perm, Y perm, etc. And then for the top layer edges, I flip it to the bottom. So now the face I'm solving is on the bottom. And I'll find an edge. Okay, here, I'll just pick this edge. Green, yellow. I want to match it up. So green is on green. More importantly, green is matching with this green because I want this green yellow edge to go here. So I do the setup move R prime D R if it is if the edge I'm solving is on the left. If it was on the right, I would do L D prime L prime. Those are the setup moves you're going to use to put this here. Do the setup move R prime D R, and then just move this piece into the slot and undo the setup move. Okay, now I have this, the other green, and so it's on the right, so I'll do the left setup move L D prime L prime, then move this into the slot making sure that I don't remove the one I already solved then undo the setup move you find another edge here red and red 
put it in. And when you can, try to put in more than one at a time. Right now, I can't do that. Um, so here, um, to do this algorithm faster, I, I like to do like a Z move and just do it this way. It's the same thing, just from a different angle. This edge. This edge. So that's how you solve two opposites, two opposite layers. Now the next step is to solve the inner layers. This is, v these inner edges are just like the three by three by four. If you can solve a three by three by four, these edges are exactly the same thing. So you want to find two that are already matched up, if there are any. Here I see orange green and orange blue. I know they're matched up because two oranges, and then these are opposite colors. So matched up orange with orange, these are going to go up here. So I'll do a double move, and then I'll move this out of the way, so when I put this back, they'll stay in the same spot, in the same layer, with the same orientation. So now I have two out of the four that are in the top one, top layer. Now I want to find the piece that goes here. It's this one, red-blue. I know, I know it's this red-blue because when I turn it up, it matches up with the blue here. But I don't want to put this in yet. I want to move it to the opposite side and put it in this spot for now. So I'll move this out of the way of the right layer, turn the right layer twice, move this back in, and flip it. <clears throat> now I have the edge that is supposed to go here, right here. Now I want to find the other edge that goes in this top layer that also has red on it. So it will be a red-green. Now here's a red-green and here's a red green. Now how you tell which one it's supposed to be is you want to flip the reds to the back by just moving the bottom layer and then rotate the right layer and then the two reds that are matching up those are the ones you want not this one these two and then move it into the layer and flip it back up and there you go now for the bottom layer edges, you will either have one of three cases. One case is that all the edges are in the right place, you just have to turn the bottom layer until they're solved. The second case is where you have two opposite edges that need to be swapped. This, to solve this, you use the same algorithm as the 3x3x4. Three by three by you, you hold it so that the two edges that need to be swapped are in the upper layer and one is in the front right spot and the other is in the back left and in this algorithm whenever I say a U or a D move it is only the inner layer so if I say a U that's a U if I say a D that's a D the algorithm to swap two opposite edges is R2 U2, F2, U, R2, U2, F2, U prime, R2, U2, F2, U prime again. But then you notice that these two edges and these two edges are swapped. This can be fixed by a very short and easy algorithm. You hold it like this, so you have the two on the top and the right. You do R2, U2, R2, U2, R2, U2. And then turn it back, and there you go. You have two swapped edges. The third case is when you have two adjacent edges that need to be swapped. Here I have these two solved, but these two need to swap. 
This is the same case as on the 3x3x4. Here I have two that need to be swapped, and here I have two that need to be swapped. So I want to take these two edges, put them, just rotate the cube so that now they're in the bottom layer, and then rotate the cube again so that they're in the back. So the algorithm to swap two, these two adjacent edges in the back is R2, F2, D prime, F2, D, R2, D prime, F2, U, F2, U prime. And that swap these two back adjacent edges. So now you should have the cage. All the edges and corners are solved. All you have left are the centers. Now all you need to solve this is just one easy algorithm or commutator known as the Niklas. The Niklas swaps two centers. This can be used on any cube, four, five, six, seven, even higher. And it can also be used to swap corners on a three by three or two by two. So how you want to use the Niklas is you want to find two edges that if you swap, it will solve them. If you swap those two. Okay. Here I have a yellow in the orange face and an orange in the yellow face. I'm going to swap these two using the Niklas. So I want and you want to make sure that they're in the same relevant position. So the orange is in the top right and the yellow is in the top right. If they're not, all you have to do is turn the layer so that they are. So if this one was here, all I'd have to do is that. And now they're in relation to each other. So for here, this would be a right Nicholas. You would do R U prime L prime U R prime U prime L U. And that's swap those two centers. I'll show you that again, but explain it to you in a different way. Here I have those two centers, again, green in the red face, red in the green face. And if I, I can swap these two using the Nicholas. And so, making sure they're in the same spot, I want to bring up the layer that they're both in. Now I want to move this center that this is the center I was swapping with move this to another layer, put that layer up, now move the top layer back to the first layer we moved up, move that layer back, then move the top layer back to the second layer we moved, put that layer back, and then fix the top. That's how you use the necklace. And you can use the necklace on the left side as well. I'll show you how. I'm just going to swap this yellow center with this red center. So I'm going to bring up left layer, which was the layer that they were both in. Move the top layer so that that center is now in the right layer. Move that layer up. Now put the top layer back to the first layer. Bring that layer down. Move the top layer back to the second layer, bring the second layer down, and then fix the top. And there you go. You can also use the necklace from, t from opposite sides. Here I see a green in the blue face and a blue in the green face. Now they're not in the same position. This is in the top left, this is in the bottom left. So all I want to do is just a face move, bring it up here. Now they're in the same position. Now I want to turn that layer twice. Now move the center over to the next column. Move that layer twice. Move it back to the first column. Turn that layer twice. Move it back to the second column. Turn that layer twice. And then fix the top layer. 
So now all you do is keep using the necklace to swap to centers until all the centers are solved. And these two. And swap those two. I have orange and green. I have orange and red. And sometimes you have a case where you can't solve two centers at the same time. When you have this, you just want to solve one at a time. So I can solve the green and put the white into the yellow layer, but it will solve one, which is still better than solving zero. <laughs> so swap these two. Same way. Now I have a white and a yellow layer, and I have a yellow and a white. Now they're in the same position. There's a necklace. There we go. I'm going to put this yellow into the yellow layer, swap it with the red piece. Now red and white. I'll put the white into the white layer. And then your last swap will be two centers. And there we go, that is my cage method, as I've been calling it. It's not the cage method, and it's not the sandwich method, it's kind of in between. So that's how I do the cage method. I hope this was helpful, and I hope you liked it. And remember to like and or favorite below. And so thanks for watching. This has been a walkthrough of my cage method. Thanks for watching, and have a nice day.